Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University, and we are in the Automatic Transmission Laboratory, and we have another lesson on AC compressor identification. Today we are talking about the V-style compressor. It's a piston-style compressor that has two pistons in it. Uh, Chrysler Corporation uh, used these a lot, so you got yourself a 68 Barracuda with air conditioning or something like that in the garage, you may have one of these compressors. First thing I want to note on this compressor is, is that they're, they're cast iron, so they're extremely heavy, extremely large. Uh, I have one here with the, the, the clutch off and, uh, and, and one of the heads off and hardly anything on it, and it's still extremely heavy. I have a hard time, hard time uh, lifting it up. You know, it's a 20 pounds. This fully dressed one is about 30 pounds, so you know, that's very heavy when today's compressors are under uh, 10 pounds. Uh, so on this particular compressor, I could, you know, Get a pair of pliers. I don't have a clutch on it. I could, I could take the crankshaft. It has a crankshaft on it. It's very similar configuration to a, 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 a V6 or a, you know a V8 engine where you have uh, two cylinders that are on an angle from each other from the crankshaft. So it's a very similar as far as what you um, can can kind of figure out um, on it. Um, just some general information about compressors. This one has the the clutch on it and has the pulley on it. Uh, anytime um, I'm looking at a compressor, um, you know, the belt's off or something like that, I want to spin the pulley, I want to make sure it's not movable, make sure I don't hear anything uh, bad from a bearing going out, you know, these bearings do go out, you know, and so that's something. Also, the hub in the very front, you know, I want to be able to turn it and make sure that I could turn it. I should be able to turn any AC compressor hub. Um, uh, if, I, as, uh, if I can't turn it, I'm concerned about it. You know, anytime I, I buy a new one uh, at the parts store, I open it up the box and I take off the caps on it so there's not any um, uh, refrigerant or oil in the system, maybe hydro locking it, and I turn it. If I can't turn it, I don't want it. I want to be able to turn it and I can kind of hear this thing uh, pumping so that I, I, I can hear the, uh, the reed valves you know, opening and closing when I do that. So, so, so that's good, you know, so it's just as, as a basic, basic inspection on it. Uh, what's also nice about this compressor is that it has a, it still has its EPR in it, which is kind of rare around here, is that but this is a evaporator pressure regulator valve. So the, um, so the suction port would be on the back of this right here. And so, so what these valves did is you start thinking about the 60s, there was no electronics for air conditioning. When you turned on the air conditioning, you sometimes, you know, that was a direct input to your clutch to turn it on. The only time that clutch turned off was if you turned off air conditioning. And so if you had a mild day where there was no heat load, uh, you could possibly get liquid refrigerant uh, getting to your compressor. And so these valves were uh, there to uh, try to prevent liquid refrigerant from getting to your compressor. So that's kind of kind of fun that it's built in there to the compressor itself. What's nice about this compressor too is that we could also um, check the clearance on that. So we're gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so when you're dealing with uh, putting a new clutch on maybe, um, you want to make sure that you always check your clearance. There is a, um, a spacer that's underneath the hub, uh, typically around the bolt that you don't want to lose. So when you pull this bolt off and you pull the hub off, that the washer <laughs> sometimes will fall and a lot of guys will try to put that washer um, uh, under this bolt, which is on the front side of the hub, not the back side of the hub. And that washer is a spacer that allows um, a gap between your hub and your pulley and and you're, you're gonna want to look at the specification to see what it is but typically it's about about 20,000 so I got a 21 thousandths feeder gauge in right here and I'm gonna put it between the the hub and the pulley and that's nice and tight so hey that was a good guess so so around 20,000 some may be as high as 25 some may drop down to 18 but you know if I, if I can't find a spec I'm gonna stick a 20,000 in there and kind of feel what it is but if there is, um, but it, but if the washer's not there, the spacer's not there, and you're using it as a washer for this bolt, you're going to have zero, meaning that the, that the pulley's not going to be able to free wheel. It's going to be connected to the um, to the hub all the time. So if your um, if your air gap, we'll call that, is too thin, you know, then obviously this could be dragging all the time. It could be uh, creating heat. Um, it's bad for the system. Uh, also, it could be that your uh, air gap is too thick, that somebody double washer did or something like that. I had two spacers in there, where you have 40,000 space in there. Well, at that point, when you um, electronically put voltage to your clutch and your clutch pulls the, uh, the hub in, uh, you have too much air gap in, and so then it, um, there's just not enough movement to take up that space, 
and so then your um, your your hub slips, and, and of course that's a problem too on that. So we don't see these compressors anymore on, on vehicles. You know, they're just too big and too heavy and too bulky. It was, you know, when you had a big old Hemi engine in the 60s and, you know, early 70s, it wasn't a problem. But when we went to four-cylinder engines, you know, stuff like these compressors that are very large, very heavy duty, just, just are obsolete. This is Scott Norman. And if you're wanting more information about uh, air conditioning, you can follow my uh, YouTube channel. Just look for Professor Pintain. Uh, I'm also on Facebook and I have a brand new website. Just look for the Professor Pintain website. Thank you very much. Have a good day.